And here are the nominations for the most frequent performance in a thrice weekly television show. Ian Lee for the 11 o'clock show. <laughs> Daisy Donovan for the 11 o'clock show. <laughs> Mackenzie Crook for the 11 o'clock show. <laughs> and David Copperfield for Three of a Kind. And the winner is Daisy Donovan. Um, I would not have been able to play this role had I not understood love with a tremendous magnitude and for that I thank my family. <laughs> I think we'd all agree that David Copfield was robbed there. <laughs> Welcome to 11 o'clock show on Tuesday the 23rd of March. And here with nominations for the day's best news stories in a humorous context, it's Mr Tommy Vance with his news slam. Tuesday, March the 23rd. And <laughs> it's war. NATO's ready to rumble. The UN are fleeing. Targets are fixed. And the locals are leaving as fast as they can. It can all mean only one thing. Clinton's covering up for another blowjob. <laughs> From a planned battle to banned cattle. And the Yanks hit back at the Euro ban on US beef. We don't want their hormone-ridden heifers, so they've banned our jam. They must be mad. It's the fruitiest, tastiest preserve in the world. And it doesn't make you grow tits and hair on your back. <laughs> From hormones to a whore's moans. And Fergie spouts off about losing her house. She says she can't afford the upkeep. £80,000 a year. Oh, diddums. You should have thought about that before you stuffed your guts with cake. Bam, bam. That's my slam. Thank you, Tommy. Later on, Ali G goes down to the well-famous antiques experts Christie's to talk art with their chairman, Lord Hindlip. Who is the best <laughs> artist in the world ever? I thought about that a great deal. I and I haven't made up my mind yet. Have you heard of Tony Art? Tony <laughs> Art. Got time to have a quick look at some of the shorter stories we found in the paper over the last few days. Hollyfield claims victory after analysing video of Lewis's fights. That is complete bollocks. <laughs> Daisy, what is that? Bollocks. Mackenzie? Bollocks. <laughs> of course he's going to say that. He's going to say, oh, no, no, I did lose. Go on, of course he's going to say it. Lying was not in the Bible. That man is no Christian. All right. <laughs> A stunning invention has been revealed which allows lobsters to die peacefully with an electric shock <laughs> rather than a boil and a squeal. Now, this invention is obviously rubbish. It's taken all the fun out of eating lobster, as far as I'm concerned. I like that noise and the pain that you know they're going through. Always nice. <laughs> Here's a story. Cardiff rejoices as two triumphant nuns win a year's membership to a bodybuilding club. <laughs> I think Daisy McKenzie have got the punchline to that gag. I don't eat crustaceans. Thanks, Crook. And finally, more scandal at Eton as another pupil has been expelled in shock drug binge. I tell you what, public school has never been so good. Sex, drugs and dangerous games. That's what I want. What was your school like in Kent, Mackenzie? Yeah, that's everything the fag said. <laughs> Responds with a weak pun. That's what I like. But the best news this week is, at last, we've done it. The goal that has tantalised mankind since February. A trip around the world in a balloon. Every Briton should be proud because our very own Bertrand Picard and Brian Johns completed the age-old challenge in Breitling Orbiter 3. A simple flying machine, little different from the traditional wicker basket and hot air bag, apart from having a pressurised cabin. And bunk beds. And a water heater. Uh, solar panels. Fax machine. Radio transponder. Backup radio transponder. Uh, VHF radio. Backup VHF radio. High frequency radio. Backup high frequency radio. Global positioning system. A backup global positioning system. Backup backup global positioning system. An emergency position indicating radio beacon. And a toilet. 
as I say, a very, very simple vehicle. It's a miracle they ever made it. But where next for the great balloon adventurers of our age? Well, Richard Branson needn't worry. There are plenty more balloon challenges to be done, aren't there, Mackenzie? That's right, Ian. Still to be undertaken successfully is the first balloon trip to the centre of the Earth. <laughs> to do this, they're developing a special heavier-than-air balloon that will simply fall through the thin surface of the Earth down into the big hole in the middle where we all know the dinosaurs live. <laughs> and the record books are still waiting for the first manned balloon mission to Jersey in a Bergerac-shaped balloon. <laughs> But the real ballooning glory lies with the first manned balloon mission to land on the surface of the sun. <laughs> Richard, if you're watching, we'd all love you to have a go at that one. Be a real crowd pleaser. <laughs> now, I ask people to name the top three brains of the century, and it's the same names that come up time and time again. Marie Curie, Simone de Beauvoir, and, of course, Kelly Brook. <laughs> <laughs> but astonishingly, according to today's Daily Telegraph, men have bigger brains than women. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, we didn't just want to take their word for it, so we asked Ian to step outside to conduct a very specific scientific research on the streets of Britain. So researchers prove what Jeff Boycott's always known, that men have bigger brains than women and are therefore better. I've come all the way to London to put this to the test. It's about a story in the paper today that says that men have got bigger brains than women. How do you feel about that? Absolute rubbish. No, but think about it, seriously. I know it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> It says that men's brains are bigger than ladies' brains. What is the capital of France? Uh, that's Paris. <laughs> what is the first letter of the alphabet? A. E. Can you spell hair? H-A-I-R. In what year did Tchaikovsky compose his first opera, The Voivoda? No idea. <laughs> I mean, can you name any famous scientists, for example? Einstein. And he was a... Scientist. And he was also a... He had a winky, so he was a... A oh, male. He was a man, exactly. Name, name a famous scientist that's n not a man. Um, Anne McLaren? Apart from her. <laughs> Susan Greenfield? Yeah, she doesn't count either. Any... <laughs> Kay Davis? Yeah, OK. How do you spell silk? S-I-L-K. And what do cows drink? Milk. Actually, they drink water. I'm very sorry, the cows drink water, milk comes from their udder. If a plane crashes on the exact border of two countries, where do they bury the survivors? I haven't a clue. Okay, we just think if the plane has crashed... They should be in their home country, they should ship them home. They should bury the survivors in the home country. Yeah. The survivors? Oh, no! <laughs> See? Now, not one single man has fallen for those today. <laughs> Got a sum here, nine times three. One of these numbers is the correct answer. In your own... Could you place it up there if you think that's the answer? Okay. Right. We've had men doing this all morning and not one has got it wrong. <laughs> Away you go. <laughs> Away we go, nine to three. Um, we'll go for that one. <laughs> there. So you're saying, just read out the sum and the answer? Nine times three, twenty-nine. <laughs> so there we have it. After rigorous scientific experiments under laboratory conditions, it turns out that we do have to agree with our American colleagues just this once. Men's brains really are bigger than women's, but women have nicer tits. And that's why we love them. This has been Ian Lee, The 11 O'Clock Show, London. Science. It's science. It's science. <laughs> ladies, ladies, calm down. Now, listen, we've scientifically proved there that men have bigger brains than women, therefore men are more intelligent, Daisy. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Ah, 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 ah. Mackenzie. Well, you've certainly got a big brain, haven't you? hoodwinked quite a few I people. I did hoodwink quite a few people there, yeah. You bamboozled them. Yes, I did bamboozle them. They're probably going to be well non plus. Very. <laughs> Mackenzie, I'm going to stop you there, actually, because you've, you've totally disproved everything I said to point out in that video. Can I just say something? Yeah. You don't have a girlfriend? No. You don't have a girlfriend? No. And you live together? <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying? <laughs> Now, what the hell's wrong with this woman? She's just won a bloody Oscar and all she can do is blub. Anyone would think she'd just seen Judy Dench in the nud. <laughs> but love her or loathe her, apparently we all want to be her. 
The Express claims it girls have had it, Ladettes have passed it, the woman who's got it is a Gwyneth. The Gwyneth, a new type of new woman for the new millennium new. So how do you spot one? <laughs> Find out now with our exclusive quiz, Are You a Gwyneth? <laughs> Question one. You're watching a European football match when your reception goes on your telly. Do you A... Clamber onto your roof, try and adjust the aerial and forehead thrusts <laughs> through your conservatory. Or B, burst into tears and thank you, Mum. <laughs> Question two. You're a trucker, angry at the price of diesel. Do you A... Follow your foul-mouthed sweaty mates into Park Lane and shout from the cab of your daff at startled Arabs. <laughs> or B, seize the opportunity to mention your dead cousins and hug Jack Nicholson. And question three. You're attempting to balloon around the world. Do you A? Think to yourself, I'm going to be in a tiny capsule for 19 days. I know, I'll take a dull Swiss man with me. <laughs> or B. Abandon your school friends, shag Brad Pitt, and every time you see a camera, whap out your jugs. <laughs> so if you've scored mainly Bs, you're a Gwyneth, which means that you should buck up and stop crying. <laughs> After all the upheavals of the last week, it's been revealed that Tony Blair's choice for President of the European Commission is ex-Italian Prime Minister Romano Prodi. He reckons that an Italian politician is just the safe pair of hands we need to tackle sleaze, backhanders and institutional corruption. <laughs> but what does Britain's future generation think? To find out, I went back to school for a lesson in Europe. Here's my report card, sir. Stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. We are the world. We are the children. Well, we're not, but the children are. That's why I've come here to Stratton Wells Primary School to ask tomorrow's potential xenophobes just what they think about their European brethren. What countries are in Europe? Let's have a list. Germany, yep. France, Russia, yep. Belgium, USSR. What famous people from the TV do you think should be in charge of Europe? Um, Michael Barrymore. Why Michael Barrymore? he's funny. He's and very he's funny, isn't he? <laughs> Why would Robbie Williams be in Not because he's a good singer, but because he'd go so wacky and everywhere would be made out of beer. <laughs> what other food they eat in Europe? Um, French bread. Bladders, French eyeballs. Bread. What? <laughs> Can you name the country that eats poo? Do you know the name of the country? <laughs> Holland. Yep. Holland, right there, and Belgium. Holland, Belgium, and France eat poo. <laughs> okay, what is the worst country? Um, in Europe. Um, yeah, I think good and hard. Germany. Why do you think Germany is the worst because country in Europe? They they like to start wars. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to start with them because they invaded Britain, of course? Italy. What do you think? No, because it's, it's no, it's in Italy. They're Italy so, do Palestine. They're sexist. They're sexist in Italy. What's wrong with being sexy? There's nothing wrong with that. Is there? Sexy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell him what you think about France. Why you don't like France? France. All, all it's about is about love, paintings, out of fashion. That was a long time ago, so I don't think that should be in this discussion. I thought you wrote a letter. Dear boys, your school is rubbish and we could have you in a fight. Yours, the Frenchies. What are you going to do? Bust them up. How? <laughs> yeah. Or rip off their hair. Yeah. Impale them. Yeah. Impale them really slowly. Yeah, of course. There will be some Europeans watching this when it goes out. Oh. Have you got a message for them? France, make your toilets bigger. <laughs> now, it's been a fantastic few days for Britain. We've swept the boards at the Oscars, we've let the final hurdle in manned ballooning, and Fergie is homeless again. Hooray! Yay! But some people are never happy. The nation of Islam never have a smile on their face, so we sent them on a day out to have a bit of a laugh. And see you after the break when Ali G discusses art with the chairman of Christie's. We're all going on a summer holiday. No more work at all. Welcome back to the 11 o'clock show and now it's time for the answers to last week's quiz on disgraced Newark MP Fiona Jones who lost her seat after overspending during her election campaign. 
question one, the answer was double the declared amount of expenses. The answer to question two was not, as many of you thought, a genuine mistake that anyone could have made. <laughs> it was, in fact, fraud. <laughs> Bit of an ugly word, that. Let's move on. Question three, 20,000 Vote Jones bumper stickers, 15,000 Newark Needs Jones posters, and a free biryani for every Jones voter at King Curry, 15 the High Street, Newark. <laughs> and question four, the answer was yes. The phrase Blair Babe is patronising, and in this case, highly inaccurate. <laughs> and the winner is a Mr P Condon. Congratulations, Mr Condon. You win a video box set of the popular barbershop sitcom Desmonds to watch <laughs> while you recuperate. Get well soon. If you're watching this show, chances are you're a borderline retard. According to the Daily Mail, that is. <laughs> Funnily enough, not a review of the show, but this report on sleep deprivation, which claims that too little sleep and you're a dimwit. Scientists warn that staying up late is turning Britain into a nation of borderline retards. That means you. And it's their words, not mine, so you can't hit me. <laughs> I personally find that term quite offensive. Anyway, the report is obviously inaccurate. My good friend Mackenzie never sleeps and he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> not the best example, but we're not scientists. However, Neil Stanley is. He's the head of the sleep laboratory at the University of Surrey, and here he is, Neil Stanley. Let's hear it. <laughs> Hi, Neil. Uh, Neil, you are a genuine sleep deprivation expert, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I've been involved in sleep research for about the past 17 years or so. Now, you've heard the report that too little sleep makes you, makes you a borderline retard. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's common sense that if we're tired, we perform worse, but um, I think there's nothing much more to it, to be honest. Mm. So you think it's a bit of huff and puff and nonsense? Yeah. And another thing that concerns me, tortoises, they sleep all year. All year. And they're the most stupid creatures. They have to have their names painted on their back in, in, <laughs> in ink. But they do live for a long time, so there must be some benefit. Mm, yeah, but they're as thick as pig shit. <laughs> well, OK. Now, how long do you, do you think we could keep Mackenzie awake before he died? It's probably not very ethical to do it. Well, um, the <laughs> thing is, with, with Mackenzie, ethics don't come into it. He's a human walking guinea pig. About 40 days. 40 days? Yeah. And he would die? Probably. I mean, he'd, he'd become sort of acting as though he was very drunk and, and yeah. disorientated and then he'd finally die. Yeah. So maybe five days in Mackenzie's face. <laughs> five days. <laughs> Mackenzie, the record's, the record's 40 days. What do you reckon? I'm doing 35. Yeah? Yeah. There <laughs> you go. Serious question now. Should humans hibernate? Um, I'm not sure the bosses would like it, but uh, I wouldn't mind. The bosses? Well, they're, Are they're... you mental? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a mental man in? <laughs> no, he's not? OK, we'll carry on. Fine. I don't... Who are the bosses? Finally, how clever was Sleepy Bagpuss? <laughs> Probably very clever. Yeah, slept all the time. In a library, do you think you can absorb information just from being in a room full of books, do you think? Uh, probably. Yeah, not really your field. Not Bit really. cheeky to ask <laughs> that question at the last moment. And finally, a lot of old people die in their sleep, don't they? Most people do, actually. It's the biggest... Really? Most people die in their sleep. Sleep yeah. is the biggest killer of people? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think that nearly everyone in this room, everyone in this room goes to sleep at some point. You're all fucked. <laughs> So, according to that, if we all go to sleep, we're all going to die. Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Stanley, sleep expert. Thanks a lot, Neil. Thank you very much. Good. As we already said, nothing can go wrong for Britain this week, and now even more good news. Each and every one of us has had a bit of a windfall. Report in the Times today that a £9 million Van Dyke portrait has been left to the nation. That works out at about, ooh, 16 pence for every man, woman and child. Lucky us. <laughs> Our voice of youth, Ali G, was less impressed. He thought Van, Van Dyke was a lesbian road movie. So <laughs> he went to get the bottom line on the top drawers from Christie's boss, Lord Hindlip. Yeah, you don't stop. It goes out to the cool up top. That's it. Wicked, I is here with Lord Hindlip, he be the head of Christie's, and he knows everything about art and thing. Now, art ain't just something for punters and people that is stiff. It is important <laughs> for everyone. Ain't that right, Lord Absolutely Hindley? right, yeah. Absolutely. So is art more about drawing or is it more about colouring in? <laughs> well, the old-fashioned idea was that you start with drawing. I think it's still not a bad way to start. All right. Who is the best <laughs> artist in the world ever? I've thought about that a great deal, I, and I haven't made up my mind yet. Have you heard of Tony Art? <laughs> I have Tony Art. 
Tony Hart. Oh, him? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you think he is the best artist because he can do anything in any style? He can do anything in any style, but he's not necessarily the best artist. Have you heard of Rolf Harris? Well, I was just going to say... He's very <laughs> do you think he is the best artist ever? I think ever? he's incredibly clever. I think he's brilliant. He's getting... amazing because you don't he's know what absolute... he is until at it's... the end. He's very <laughs> He's a genius. He's fantastic. So, what is the Turner Prize? The Turner Prize is perfectly valid. It draws attention to contemporary things. Who won it this year? It was Chris Afili. He paints with elephant dung. What? <laughs> <laughs> you what? You asked me and I told you, he paints with elephant oh, dung. Rubbish. I used to eat rubbish, but that's what he uses. Elephant dung like shite. <laughs> and that is art. Me once did that with some dog stuff and me got a police <laughs> caution. Me put it on my enemies. Me well, put, put smell this art. and you know what you is. I got police caution for that. This yeah. guy <laughs> to be an artist, do you have to be a bit mental? I think so, don't you? Because I hope so. Me teacher told me that Van Gogh chopped his knob off. <laughs> he chopped his knob off. He chopped his ear off. What? He chopped his ear off? He chopped his ear off. Well, yes. What did he do that for? <laughs> God, I mean. So thank you very much, Lord Inlip. You have shown that art is fun, and it is time that we will start knowing a bit about it, and not just going, hey, that's for Batty Boys, but going out there, realizing it, yeah, and making it real. <laughs> London was brought to a standstill yesterday. The truckers were in town protesting against rising fuel prices and road tax and threatening to leave Britain for the continent. The papers are full of it, but are we getting the whole story? Let's find out what the papers ought to say in our regular feature, What the Papers Ought to Say. The Mail reports one mother trucker is saying... We apologise for the disruption, but all we're trying to do is keep a British man in a British job for a British family. When what they meant was... We don't apologise for the disruption. All we're trying to do is keep a fat man in a cushy job for his grubby family. <laughs> the Telegraph quotes a lorry driver as saying... I'm looking at Holland because it will save me £120,000. When what he meant was... I'm looking at Holland because it will save me a fortune in porn and dope. <laughs> and finally, the Mail says... The majority of motorists were on our side and tooted their horns and gave the thumbs up. When what they should have said was... The majority of motorists tooted their horns and told us to get out of the bastard way. <laughs> and we've just got enough time left to congratulate Salman Rushdie on his recent successful eye surgery. <laughs> should frighten off a few Muslims. That was Tuesday the 23rd of March. See you tomorrow for Wednesday the 24th. Good night, my two young friends. Good night. Good night.